call the meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. This meeting of the South Wichita and Granville Regional School Committee is being audio and video recorded. Amy uh, is taking the attendance and we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, so at this time, I open the floor for nominations for the school committee chairman for the term commencing immediately, August 16th, 2021. I would like to nominate Ryan for the position of chairperson. So moved. Second. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Rob Stevenson. Second. All right. Uh, so we're going to start. We have two nominees at this time. So I'm going to ask someone to please make a motion to appoint one of the nominees, and we will have a discussion. And we will take a vote and we will continue taking votes until we have a new chair. I would make a motion to appoint, is that correct? Appoint. To yes. appoint Ryan and have a discussion. Okay. Anybody second that? I'll second it. Okay. Okay, it's open for discussion. I can talk. Let me go first. <laughs> um, I think we have a very unique uh, year this year with so many new people, right? Um, am I correct that there's only two of us, two people who have actually served more than one term or not in their first term? Yes. Um, so we're very inexperienced, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if we can all work together to uh, move the committee forward and, and do what's best for our students and our district. Um, I mean, I think a good chair would be one who would mentor, but we don't have a person to really mentor new members. And um, my first year last year was very unlike, I think, any year that the school committee has had. And um, this will be a whole new year for me of learning how this runs on a normal basis. Um, but I also think one, a good chair, someone who, who listens to questions, who welcomes diversity, different opinions, different communication styles, different viewpoints, um, who doesn't necessarily get into the debate a ton that is happening between us, but one who can steer us to keep on track and make sure each person is valued and heard and listened to. Um, I think I would be good at that. I'm not one who gets caught into the argument. Tell my kids not to argue why I should adults. <laughs> um, my passion for this district started back when I'm from Southwick. I grew up here. I graduated from Southwick High. I moved back home to raise my children here. My children are very young. I have one that's only one years old, so you guys are stuck with me for a long time. Um, I want to, their education and their experiences are of utmost importance to me. They're my life, obviously. My four. God help me, four children. Um, I think I thank Pam for uh, thinking that I could do a good job at this. I value your experience on this board because you're one of the few that have it. Um, I'd like to add to that since I nominated Ryan. Um, I don't think any of us expected to be in the position that we're in today. Um, certainly not on such short notice. Um, you know, we were, I think I speak for everybody when I say we were all shocked at Jeff's resignation. Um, and I don't think that there's anyone here, and I hope nobody takes offense to this, that could possibly fill his shoes. Um, he had so much experience with this district, brought a wealth of knowledge and history um, and extreme dedication and, and leadership um, that it, it, making this decision is hard. Um, 
I will support whoever is nominated as chair. Um, but I feel that where we are at this crossroads, um, Ryan is, is a very sound choice. Um, as she mentioned, she grew up in South Wood Lake. I think she's the only member remaining on the committee that actually graduated from the South Wood schools. Um, her choice to join the committee last year during COVID while working as a nurse and after having just given birth um, is actually <laughs> right um, it, it is just amazing and clearly speaks to her dedication both to this community as well as the school district. Um, and despite being a relatively new member, um, I've been very impressed um, with her presence. Um, she's proven to be a very active listener who always asks great questions and thoughtfully considers all sides of an issue, independent of personal beliefs. She's honest, intelligent, level-headed, and I have complete faith in her ability to serve and learn as chair in this committee. And if elected, I would support her in every way that I could. Is there anybody else who would like to add anything to that? So we're going to take a vote right now for Ryan Karabkov uh, to be nominated as the chair of the school committee. All those in favor? You can raise your hands, yes. Great. So it was Ryan, Pam, and Ted. Any abstaining? Any nays? Well, well yeah, I guess. Or is it just another choice? Well, you, you can always abstain from a vote. No, oh, I meant okay. the nays. Okay. You don't have to vote. You can always abstain. Okay. So uh, we did not reach a fi uh, 51%. So can I have someone make a motion to appoint another nominee? A motion to appoint Rob Stevens to be the chair. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. So I would just say again, I think we've said it here, but we are in such a unique situation. And I feel like regardless of the way this works out, everything's going to be fine. I don't think that this is a end of world scenario or anything like that. And I think that, like you said about Jeff, we would all gladly be here to vote in favor of him continuing to do the job that he did. And we were certainly appreciative of the work that he did and glad that we didn't have to do it most of the time. Um, in the conversations that I've gotten to know Rob, um, I've respected his ability to dig into the detail. Um, I do think that on, on many issues, he knows some of the policy better than I do after a couple of years. So um, I've been impressed with uh, his ability and knowledge and uh, his uh, tenacity to get into the issue, understand it, and follow what we've said we've done and what we will do. So uh, while this is, a, again, an incredibly odd situation of having someone just starting, um, I feel comfortable with that that decision at this time, like I said, after getting to, to know him some of the outside and having some conversations with him. I guess I want to jump in here. I, I mean, from my perspective, it, it's one of us has to step up and do this. Um, it's certainly not something that I would be uh, opposed to doing, uh, being able to looking at the responsibilities of the chair um, of the committee. It's predominantly a organizational setup to make sure that the meeting is run appropriately to make sure that we're following the guidelines, make sure that we're having uh, respect for people that come for public comment to be able to voice their opinion, um, to make sure that we're doing the business to take care of the responsibilities that we've all inherited by being on this board. Um, it's certainly something that I feel that I'm very qualified to be able to do. 
um, in the position that I've held over the years in different uh, in different job responsibilities, doing stuff like this is certainly um, not foreign to me. Uh, I've over the years been responsible for budgets almost the size of the budget that we have for the school district. Um, I've had to oversee and supervise 200 plus employees at a time, depending on where and uh, what buildings that we sort of had that we were overseeing. So I certainly uh, welcome the opportunity. Uh, I thank Jonathan for his support. Uh, I would certainly be open to filling this position and uh, I would promise to do my, uh, I'll do best to make sure that uh, everything is done sort of according to order. And uh, as we said, it, it's to learn and to respect everybody and to allow us to conduct the business in an orderly fashion and, and learn from each other and make sure that we're progressing forward. So I certainly am open and able to, uh, to do that and fulfill that role if, if voted in. Does anybody else would like to make comments? Okay. I would like to make a comment, sure. Um, I appreciate your willingness to jump in wholeheartedly. I commend your passion um, and respect the amount of homework that you've done with regard to reading policy. Um, and I don't at all question your ability to, to manage the meetings and operate as chair. However, um, it you have attended one meeting, this will be your second meeting. Um, and while I don't question your experience in other realms, um, I have a hard time swallowing um, the leadership in the chair from someone who hasn't had experience serving as a school committee member on this particular board. I would feel differently perhaps a year from now after I know that you've been on the community committee for at least a year as Ryan has, know how the committee operates, knows the purviews of the committee, what we do do, what we don't do. But I know from personal experience that my, what I thought my role as a committee member was, has changed significantly since when I was first elected and then as it evolved over time. And I think that it's important for the, the chair to have spent um, at least a year on the position, on the school committee um, before taking on the leadership role as chair. Um, and I would welcome your eagerness again a year from now. Is there anybody else who'd like to make a comment? So we're going to take a vote. I will ask for those who are in favor. I will ask for those who are opposed and I will ask for those who wish to abstain. All those in favor? Three in favor, any opposed? Two, three opposed and no abstentions. So um, the vote reads three in favor, three opposed, zero abstained. And I'm going to name um, Rob, Stevenson, uh, Rob Stevenson as the chairman of the school committee, and I turn the remaining nominations over to the chairman. Uh, thank you, Ms. Superintendent. Um, so at this point, I open the floor for nominations for school committee vice chairman for the term commencing immediately August 16th, 2021. I nominate, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I nominate Pam. Second. Are there any other nominations for vice chairman? If there's not, we've had a motion and a second. Um, I'll call for a vote. It will be a roll call vote. All those in favor of nominee as, as for Pam as vice chairman of the Sedswick Town and Granville Regional School Committee. Um, if I can have a vote for the ayes. It's five, four, um, stain. 
abstain. Any opposed? Okay, so we have five, four, uh, one abstention and zero opposed. Uh, I name Pam Ketchke as the vice chairman of the school committee. Um, at this time, I open the floor for nominations for school committee secretary for the term commencing immediately August 16th, 2021. I would like to nominate Bryant for the position of secretary. Second. For any other nominations? Uh, first, we have an appointment and a second. Um, I'll call the vote. This will be a roll call vote. Um, all those in favor of Ryan as secretary of the Southwick Colin Granville Regional School Committee. Uh, if I can see a show of hands for our yes. Aye. Six zero. No abstention, no oppose. So Ryan is the secretary of the Southwick Colin Regional School Committee. So at this point, next we have the secretary's report. Um, in front of you is the minutes from the last meeting uh, dated June the 1st, 2021. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. I second. Any questions? Items on the minutes that anybody has? Okay, without any questions, I have a, uh, take a, or I guess a vote to accept the minutes. Can I get a show of hands for accepting of the minutes? Six, zero, zero. Do we have any warrants, Amy, that need to be? Okay. <laughs> Superintendent Willard, do you have any correspondences for this meeting? We do. I just want to read uh, an email that we received on Friday, August 13th. It says, Dear Superintendent Willard and Vice Chairperson Petschke, it is with a heavy heart that I am writing to give my formal notice of resignation from the Southwick Town and Granville Regional School Committee, along with my role as president of the Lower Pioneer Valley Educational Corporation Board of Directors. My resignation from the committee and board of directors is effective immediately. Due to increased leadership responsibilities in my professional career, I no longer have the time to commit this responsibility without compromising the attention that this commitment commands. I am grateful to have had the opportunity to serve my community and contribute to enhancing the educational experience for the young minds in our local communities. I wish you all the very best. Kind regards, Jeff Ford. And that is all I have for correspondence. <clears throat> So at this point, we're at our first public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to bring forward any public comments this evening? Hi, I'm Sue Baxter. I live over on 43 Compound Road. Good evening. I know one of the topics tonight is supposed to be masking, not masking, and the recommendation. Uh, I can't hear. masking. And speak up a little bit. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, we all know this has been an ongoing, evolving disease for 18 months now. And last July, when Commissioner Riley put out, you know, the the everybody come back full time, five days a week, masks weren't mandated by the state. You know, the CDC keeps updating. Their recommendations and even as of last week they're strongly strongly recommending masks for everybody to try and prevent school closures again and we've already seen a lot of places camps schools wherever where children are congregating where more and more children are who are not yet eligible for the vaccine um catching covid the delta variant 
from even adults who are inoculated but asymptomatic. So this is all ongoing with current science. And I'm just very concerned about the stance that the district will be taking on this matter. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Anyone else for public comment? Did I see a hand? Sir, did you? Uh, will there be a second? Round? Yes, there's a second no, round. Yes, sir. It'll be after the best report. Yes, sir. Um, I think a timer that might be better just before the end. Yeah, it'll be after the it'll be after the master plan. Okay, thank you. Um, we do not have a student advisory report tonight. We do not have any educational presentations, um, no policies. Uh, we have some action items to address. Uh, move to award a contract to select physical therapy of West Hartford, Connecticut for athletic trainer services with a three year period of August 2021 through June 2024. The contract for services shall be based upon select physical therapies proposal submitted in accordance with the Southwick Island Granville Regional School District's request for proposals RFP 2022 2 dated June 21st, 2021. June 21st, 2021 recommended. So moved. Second. Do we have any questions or comments on this proposal, this action item in front of us? We've, uh, I assume we've used them before. This is like a standard three year. We were just at the end of one. Yes, the okay. um, select physical therapy um, and some of its sister companies have been providing the athletic trainer services since at least 2008. 2008 was the last time our accounting system changed and they were the, they were, they were it at the time. So um, they've also been, this is the third um, three year uh, RFP contract process we've gone through with them. Uh, previously, another method was used, but uh, they've been the only responding uh, to our request for proposals. Um, yeah, full disclosure, they are experiencing some staffing uh, issues right now. And the initial uh, initial part of this contract, probably at, at least you know sometime into the fall support season, we're going to be working on a on a per diem or hourly basis with them as we provide people as they are available um, till they can get that staffing situation rectified. Uh, Mr. Sanchegrin, the athletic director, is uh, working with Select and with other uh, sources for for this for services, some independent contractors that uh, he'll bring on board to cover as many of the uh, sports uh, as possible. Uh, we have no uh, requirement under MIAA rules to for any of the fall athletic season sports to have a, a trainer present, but it's really not, a, we don't wanna take that step backward. I mean, we wanna continue with the program that we've, we've built over the years um, so, you know, they've assured us that they'll have somebody in place as soon as, as soon as they can. But like so many other sectors, um, labor shortage is, is hitting them as well. Uh, the contract that we ultimately execute with them will reflect will reflect that change that we need to have um, be on an hourly basis until they have some, a, de a dedicated service provider. Anybody have any other questions, comments? Okay, this time we we'll take a vote. Um, can we get all in favor of accepting the approval bid for athletic training services? Six zero zero. Motion passes. Mr. Pass, yes. Okay. Move to Sorry, award a contract to the first step therapy of Southwick Mass for phys physical therapy services for the three year period of August 2021 through July, 2024. The contract for services shall be based upon First Steps Therapies proposal submitted in accordance with the South Victorian Granville Regional School District's request for proposals, RFP 2022-1, dated June 9th, 2021. <laughs> First Steps Therapies proposal was determined to be the most advantageous for the district. Recommended. So moved. Any questions, comments concerning this action item? 
have we used this these people before um only very recently for the uh, summer extended uh, school year uh, for special ed um, students the physical therapy service provider that we've been working with previously um, indicated back in the spring that you would no longer be um, offering that service to the district. So, okay. so we it was incumbent upon else. us. Also, based on the source of funds that we're we're using, we're using the federal uh, IDEA grant funds, okay. which require anything over ten thousand dollars to go through a competitive uh, procurement yeah. process. First up was the. Uh, Death proposal we, we received as rated by both the special ed director, uh, Mrs. John, and, and myself. Any other questions or comments? All right, we'll take a vote. All in favor of approving the bid for physical therapy services. Motion passes 600. Move to approve. Move to approve home education proposals HS 2122-01 through HS 2122-18 recommended. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on this? Are, I guess, Superintendent, so, so, could you clear, are these individual students and this is their program yes. and that you've reviewed and accepted them? Is that? Yes. Okay. You'll see them throughout the course of the year. Okay. Have we, um, just out of curiosity, have we seen an uptick, downtick versus last year? We won't know. It's so too, it's too early too to early tell. To Most tell. of them we don't get until right before school starts and right, right into September. Yeah, I'm just curious how the numbers are trending now that we're. We know. definitely saw an uptick last year, right, right. but yeah. it's it's too early to tell. Okay. Um, and I am I correct that we do not have anything on the books that requires families to submit these proposals by a certain date? We have a recommend recommendation that we like to have them by and a suggested due date, but they come in throughout the entire course of the school year. Amy does a really good job by reaching out to all families who have sent us uh, requests in the past and she reaches out to them personally mm -hmm. and follows up with them. So over the course of the past few years, it has gotten much better and we've, they've been much more timely but that's due to Amy's efforts by reaching out to the families. Any other questions or comments? All right, take a vote to approve the home education plans. Uh, can I get a show of hands and approve those? Motion passes 6-0-0. Be it resolved that the Southwick Tiling Granville Regional School Committee hereby extends its congratulations to Lori Tincati in recognition of 26 years of computer network excellence, we hereby convey our sincere appreciation for your valuable efforts, dedicated service, and assistance rendered, which has enhanced the image of the South McTelling Granville Regional Schools, and a record of these resolutions shall be permanently entered into the minutes of this school district. Recommended. So moved. Second. Comments? Or? Did we anticipate? Um, this now, so she was there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Do we now have an open position? Yes, yeah. and we're, we're discussing how best to uh, to go about that. That'll be an upcoming action item, <laughs> <laughs> right? I guess. Uh, show of hands for exception of this resolution. Motion passes 600. Uh, move to approve the following school choice seats for the 2021 2022 school year uh, five kindergarten seats, two first grade seats. Recommended. Uh, I want to just give you a little background before we you ask any questions. Uh, we did not do any kindergarten or first grade seats uh, previously because we wanted to wait to see where we were with enrollment. Uh, after we all of our kindergarten classes were filled, we were up to 17 students in a kindergarten class, which based on our ESER 3 evaluation survey feedback from families, we felt was a little too high. So we are going to use the ESER 3 funds to hire a new kindergarten teacher and kindergarten para and open a sixth kindergarten classroom uh, at, for this upcoming school year. 
So um, we do have the ability to now, which we did not have previously to fill five kindergarten school choice seats. And based on where we are in first grade, we do have the ability to open two first grade seats uh, and keep the, those classes at 16. And until this point, have you had to decline interested parties? Have you had people request for uh, acceptance into the school choice and had to say, you know, at this point in time, I don't have room? Yes. In fact, opening up the five kindergarten seats, we still will not be able to accept everybody. Okay. Are we taking students first who have a brother or sibling, sibling already? So per the law, teachers? per the law, we have to take siblings first. And then it becomes a lot. And any of our teachers, kids who might be in that, they That's, don't get precedent? They don't. Okay. So, so it's anybody with siblings, and then it's a lottery based on everybody else. So mm -hmm. that's fair. Mm -hmm. With five more seats, how many kindergarten seats? I think how we have six seats? applicants right now. So almost and all then of five them. will put how many kids in each kindergarten? Class? They will be at about 15, a little bit under 15. So by using e the ESER funds for this, is this something that we would revisit next year? Because it's going to depend on the volume of the kids next year too, right? But if we're using ESER funds, that those funds do go away. Yes. Yes. And my experience is that because we're such a small school district and because we've experienced changes in enrollment, mm -hmm. we're constantly adjusting yeah. how many classes we have at each grade level. How many first graders are coming in that weren't part of the district last year? They don't I have the answer to that. I'm just curious. I mean, so we had yeah. a lot of homeschool kids. We I did. Wonder. Mm -hmm. But we did add that additional teacher for grade one this year right. because right we want to make sure but we're okay so and you said kindergarten or till that slot's filled for kindergarten is it permanent though no it's already been filled oh by somebody in district wow. so oh, mm -hmm. that's amazing well said that worked out real good <laughs> okay i guess we'll take a vote for approving this uh, motion can i get a show of hands for approving of the uh, additional school choke seats Motion passes six zero zero. And we are on two reports. Superintendent, do you have a report for us this evening? I do. So I know a lot of people have been wondering about where we are going to be uh, with masks for next year. So when the commissioner came out with his guidance uh, on Friday, July 30th, his mask guidance was this fall. Uh, DESI and the DPH are going to strongly recommend that all students in kindergarten through grade six wear masks when indoors, except students who cannot do so due to medical conditions or behavioral needs. Masks are not necessary outdoors and may be removed while eating indoors. DESI and DPH also strongly recommend that unvaccinated staff in all grades, unvaccinated students in grade seven and above, and unvaccinated visitors wear masks indoors in alignment with the statewide advisory on masking. DESE and DPH recommend that schools allow vaccinated students to remain unmasked. Any individual at higher risk for severe disease from COVID-19 or with a household member who is at high risk is encouraged to mask regardless of vaccination status consistent with the updated DPH advisory on face coverings and masks. Any child or family who prefers to mask at school should be supported in this choice. By federal public health order, all students and staff are required to wear masks on school buses at this time. All staff and students must wear masks while in school health offices. Additional guidance for school health professionals is forthcoming from DPH. So that information came out. And then there was also the strong push for uh, school committees from the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, where they sent you all uh, a sample face covering policy that was sent to all school committees if you wanted to do uh, mandatory masking for K through 12. And is this that? That is the face coverings ones. The, I can't Can you get that where? Yes. To Massachusetts Association. Okay, no, no, but it didn't. Committees. So it's in our packet. It yeah. didn't get emailed to us or anything like that. Um, we should no. have received it from Massachusetts Association of School Committees. I did not. It was if it was an email from the state, I did not receive it. 
so you don't, we're not making any decisions tonight. I'm just yep. giving you the information. So there's two options that were really put out there, whether that school committees are going to be wrestling with this fall, whether to mandate masking for all students or to go with DESE recommendation. If you go with a DESE recommendation, you do not need uh, to uh, take a, assume a policy, write a policy. Uh, but the previous chair of the school committee asked us to solicit a survey of stakeholders in the community to see where our community uh, was leaning one way or the other. So we did receive 826 responses on our survey. Uh, we had the green is the parents, caregivers, uh, the blue up above, and one more up above, is students and uh, staff members, teachers, That's and then the yellow was other. Well, I think Amy's That's on, Amy's on a wrong three. slide. Yeah. On question three, right? question yeah, you got to go First to question, question one. So okay. <laughs> so <laughs> question three was where she they asked everybody where they were. So if you look at it, option one was mandated masking for all. And it came out at 43% of the people who took the survey are recommending mandated masks for all. 41% uh, of the people who took the survey are recommending following DESE guidance. And option three was to say that if you are vaccinated, you do not need to wear a mask, but to mandate all unvaccinated people to wear a mask. And that came out at about 16%. So that is the stakeholder input from 826 responses that we received. Uh, the other information I want to give you before you uh, make a decision on where you want to go with this, uh, we did collect the data. We went to the website and we looked at how many of our 12 to 15 year old students in Granville and Tolland are vaccinated. 41% uh, of the 12 to 15 year olds in Granville and Tolland are fully vaccinated. And the 16 to 19 year olds, it is 59%. In Southwick, uh, the 12 to 15 year olds that are fully vaccinated are 37% and the numbers of 16 to 19 year olds are 52%. I also went and checked out the recent COVID cases in uh, our towns and in the last uh, COVID update, there were 17 positive cases in Southwick and there were three positive cases in Granville. And if you look at the DESE metrics that we used last year, uh, 25 cases in a town would have put us in that red metric category. And that is what I have for you tonight. Do you have any questions? So, so the 20, so we wouldn't have been at the 25. We would not have been at red using last year's metrics. Yeah, no, okay. we are not. And when do we need to make a decision on this by it's not, we're not, making a decision tonight. No, Th that is a school committee decision. I know okay. parents are looking for a decision. We've had parents reaching out to us, uh, <laughs> asking us what the plan is for this upcoming school year. So that is a decision the school committee is going to need to make to set another meeting and to take a vote on what their recommendation is for masks for this upcoming school year. So the, the question I have is if we stayed with the DESE guidelines, we don't need to have another meeting, right? That would be correct. So in a sense, we are we making would, a decision. If we decided that tonight, there wouldn't be another meeting. Is that correct? Well, we would still have to take, uh, I, I think, believe, a vote on to solicit the input on it. I think what you said, Superintendent, is that if we decide to go with the DESE recommendations, we do not need to create a special policy. Correct. If we go, we're still going to need to have a vote as to okay. what we want to follow. But if we follow DESE's recommendations, that is just entered and submitted and we don't need to create a policy. Correct. So because they're all recommendations. They're not right. mandates. Or... When was the survey supposed to be completed by? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. I thought about that. I just want to give people enough time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe came in on Friday. So okay, I think sent so. Out as well. Yeah, they yeah. were. They were real quick. They were fast. So, yeah, I was too, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that the first decision that needs to be made, and I believe it needs to be made by a vote, is whether or not we 
proceed by whether or not we follow option Creative two. Policy. Is that correct? I believe so. I think we need to make a decision as to what we want to follow. If we if we decide that we obviously there's two options. We either well, there's three options, well, right. but there's if three. we look at parental preference and right. community preference, we really have two options. We're either so going to follow Desi's recommendations or we're going to issue some sort of mandate, whether it's a mandate where everybody wears a mask <laughs> or there's a mandate where only unvaccinated will wear a mask. Well, it's strongly recommended. Right. No, no, but Desi is is if we follow Desi's recommendations. It, none of it is a mandate. Nothing. Right. It's allowing the parents right. to make a decision if they want to. So if you're on vaccine but want your kid to not wear a mask, then that's up to your, as the parent's choice. Right. Versus figuring out who the unvaccinated people are and singling them out. Right. Which is option three, which I don't think yeah. is very correct. Did you say the pollen numbers are already in the grand room? Yes. What was the pollen numbers? It, it, they don't disaggregate. They just say talents included. Yeah, but what was, did they have the, okay. They don't separate no, it up like talent anymore? Not talent in Granville, that's what's included. Oh. I just copy and paste in those, that, that spreadsheet. For zero? Everybody has been vaccinated. There well, you go. everyone was vaccinated at home? With the exception of the small kids. Wow. Ted no, was out not, lining it's, them it's, all it's, up. It's, 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 I know it's not very <laughs> large group, but still no one opposed it. That are not vaccinated, actually. So, oh, okay. I was say, Maybe oh, the majority, but no one opposed it. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. So my inclination, and forgive me if I'm overstepping here, but my inclination would be to um, hear um, thoughts from the committee hear thoughts from the people who have attended tonight yep. um, and then have another meeting yep. shortly to decide <clears throat> what option we're going to go with. And then if we chose option one, it would seem to me that then the, ne the step after that would be to craft Policy. Am I yeah. correct? Policy, policy needs to get together. And that needs to happen yes. in policy sub. Yes. <laughs> Which okay. gets to our next point when we get to <laughs> we're getting we're getting to the subcommittee. So. Right. That would be correct. Right. Yeah. So I don't know the best order to do these things, but I firmly believe that with all issues, we need to make it make sure everybody feels comfortable to yeah. state their opinions, mm -hmm. to be open to hearing other opinions and to respect the people that have taken the time to be here tonight. Yeah, because they're exactly. behind us and it would be past the, if we voted now, they wouldn't. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I mean, and, it. and if we want to see something tonight, I think that's fine. We're going to have to have another meeting and it, it, whether, I guess it's called a special meeting for specifically for this item. Well, I think we're going to have, I mean, somebody, we could make a motion right now to do yeah. something in, you know, if we made a motion, if somebody made a motion right now to say follow the DESI guidelines, we wouldn't have to have another meeting. Is that correct? Or does I, my understanding is that you can't make them, that that can't be made during a current meeting. Like that has to be put into the agenda for the next meeting, but that might just it's be a great question. I, I, practices. I think to say, I think we'll be policy. safe. I think we would be safe if we Had identified that we're going to have a separate meeting. That's fair. Okay. Put it on the agenda as an action item. Or a discussion with an action item, and then we're probably safe doing it that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we're going to need an extra meeting, but do we need to make a motion? Make a meeting? I don't think we need a motion to <laughs> make a meeting. Okay. Amy can just yeah. send out her so little, we, well, we her little wizard us, thing that she uses. And but we were talking like Thursday, right? Of this week. I was like, you had already texted us. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I love everybody. Everybody is available. Thursday, if you wanted to have a meeting, right? You could get it posted tomorrow and have it. No, I mean, I said I wasn't available. Well, you said you could remote. I can, no, I can remote, right? Can right. We still have the ability to do that, don't we? Yeah. It's still, it's still state, whatever yeah. public state meeting. regulation. Yeah. Okay. Just, well, it's the town meeting. People Zoom in. Well, they had that brief period where it, ela it right. elapsed and then they reinstated. Okay. So as long as it's reinstated. Then so if Pat can, if Pat can, 
remote in. Okay, so then that way we can have our meeting on Thursday. That'll give us time to notify mm -hmm. properly and, yeah. and allow for more public comment. Right. Well, those, yeah, the survey can yeah. be completed and we don't yeah. have that. The survey's complete. The time frame on the survey's tomorrow for the end date. Tomorrow. Okay. So why don't we do that? Um, we'll have a public comment here and shortly that anybody here can certainly voice your opinion so that we can hear that. Um, and then we'll have, I'm assuming, some more people joining us on Thursday. Do we want to have a discussion amongst ourselves right now about yeah. this issue or? Or yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess from my perspective, looking at the respondents where they're at right now, I mean, I, I'm certainly um, leaning right. towards the Very recommending close. of DESE's policies. I agree. Um, I think that gives us the most flexibility. Um, it certainly allows for anybody that is concerned about wearing a mask to be able to have their children come and wear a mask. Um, I know there are some that are that, that do have concerns on the other side. Um, it gives them that option. I mean, as parents, I have a as a parent of three, I have a tough time telling another parent what they're supposed to be doing for the health of their child. Um, it, I'm also with Ryan. I'm in healthcare. I've lived COVID. I've worked in skilled nursing facilities where we've got the most frail of the frail there. Um, I mean, in the state of Massachusetts and Connecticut, they've issued mandates for the employees in skilled nursing to be vaccinated. From that perspective, oh, I think that makes skilled nursing facilities. It's all over. It's Hartford Healthcare. Is okay. Make yeah. So there's people that are doing that privately as well. I mean, I think it's. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, in all healthcare practices, everybody's required to be masked. Patients and staff. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, but I'm talking about yeah. even like they're mandating Vaccinated. at this point mm -hmm. that employees I have to be if vaccinated. I, don't. Right. Right. I could be fired if I don't. I mean, yeah. I have full disclosure. I am vaccinated. I did yeah. it for my own personal reasons, but I could be fired if I was not. Yeah, so I, I just, I guess from a child I think perspective. the young kids, though, I mean, because it's you need it on the bus. So any child yeah. who takes the bus obviously has one on. Yeah. Young kids probably want to take them off. So, I mean, they're just going to move into their school and I, they're so used to it. Right. They're so used to it. Young kids, I don't find, or my own children anyway, don't complain about wearing a mask and are very good about generally remembering to take one out of the car with them when I'm not. But my older like cousins in the school or my young cousins, but they're older in the school system in high school complain about it. I feel like the young ones, especially who are not vaccinated, are very this is their new norm. Now the other thing, like the the social distancing, the three foot, like that is essentially eliminated, correct? Correct. At this point. So I mean, the kids are gonna be able to be kids in school and if they're Within three feet, the alarms aren't going to go off, and nobody. I heard Woodland well, and yeah, Powder it. Mill was going to continue. Gonna try, continue at three feet. Yeah, they're going to try to continue at three feet and keep cohorts and recess the same. So every, uh, I think it was six school days, we finally got to be on the playground in Woodland because they split them up. So, so is that something that each school is going to be doing their own? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I would feel comfortable following the DESE guidelines as well. However, I do think it's the right thing to do to give more time for the public to have notice of when this vote is going to happen so that they can have their voice heard properly. But as it stands now, I, I, I agree with you that giving the parents the option of, uh, of doing that with their kids is, seems the most appropriate. I mean, I have a child who's immune compromised and we've lived with his condition for 18 years. And I will say, I understand both sides of, or all sides of opinion. And I think that um, as a family unit, I know how I feel and I know how we've lived our lives, not just during COVID, but we continue to live. And I think that I understand the importance of, um, you know, wearing masks, you know, I think it, it does help. However, I, I leave it up to the parents as their choice. And I understand that, you know, they, as a family unit, are doing what they feel is just and responsible. And I, uh, I agree that option two is probably the best for our district. Um, but I do, I think that having the, 
you know, not being forced, say, to wear a mask, I think having the, the parents choose is, is the best, definitely the best decision. Now, if, they, if the state, if the governor changes or somebody from the state perspective changes this recommendation to a mandate, everything changes at that point. Yeah, correct. correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, I, I kind of appreciate the, I kind of, like, I appreciate them while letting the local school committees, but I also get where it's like they're kind of passing the buck to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, passing the buck to people who yeah. aren't qualified necessarily to make those decisions. Correct. And that's the part that bothers me. And while I would love to have faith that, you know, when we give people the freedom, they'll do the right thing. Um, you know, unfortunately, the vaccination status doesn't prove that that's what's happening. And we can't, we can't pretend otherwise that if you give kids the option not to wear a mask, they're not going to wear a mask, no matter how used to it they are. I gotta tell you, as soon as my kids got vaccinated, as soon as we got vaccinated, we all whipped off the masks and we couldn't wait to be rid of them. And we've been thrilled to be rid of them all summer long. It's just been within the last week that I have said, you know what? I'm looking around at what's happening in the community. I'm looking at, we're in a position I never thought we would be in all over again. Um, we don't have the level of community vaccination that I expected we would have at this point in time. Um, and now I feel that, you know, the option, I feel that if, and forgive this analogy, I just rewatched the movie Jaws, but I can't <laughs> help feeling like mm -hmm. if we don't do what we know is right for the, the safety of our students, that we run the risk of potentially being the mayor of Jaws. And, and I, I just, I can't bring myself to do that looking at the, the level of the vaccination rates and seeing how viral this new variant is. This new variant is so much more contagious than what we were going through a year ago. Um, and you know what? I am thrilled that Desi has said, bring them all back. I am thrilled that Desi has said, no more social distancing. I'm thrilled that Desi has said, you can put them in groups. But with all of those safety protocols taken away, the, the most effective thing that we have to reduce the spread of disease, whether it be COVID or even just the flu, is a mask. I'm, I don't wanna wear a mask. I don't want my students to have to wear a mask. I would love to have the personal freedom to do what I personally am comfortable with. But the reality is we're in a global pandemic. And in my world, a global pandemic trumps personal freedom. And that if we're taking away all these other safety precautions, and I'd be thrilled if we can maintain three feet of a distance. Yes. But I know that, is that, that, that kids will be kids. And if we're taking all those other safety protocols away, if it comes down to kids having to wear a mask versus kids not being able to come to school. Whether it's because things get so bad that we have to temporarily remote learn again, God forbid, or what more of a reality is going to be is that these kids are going to get sick and they're going to get sick and they're going to be absent from school. And guess what? So are all of their close contacts. And there's an exemption. There's a close contact exemption in the new DESE regulations but that close contact exemption for schools only applies if you're wearing a mask. So if the kids are not wearing a mask, we're going to have an enormous amount of absences due to illness and close contacts. And as a teacher, that's a greater disruption to learning. As a parent, I know absences are a greater disruption to learning than wearing a mask. I have a question because then the next question was about uh, what, testing and staying? Test which, and stay. Which many people have 
62% responded yes to. So if you're in a close con, if your child's a close contact, they test them for five days straight, but stay at school. So how's this work? Yes. Okay. That's it. If we could do this, we tried to get the buyback now testing here yeah, last year. That, yeah. Do you remember I tried? Yeah. And our school physician would not sign off on it. So we could not do the buy next now testing. We could also not do any of the pool testing because you, you needed the buy next now testing to do the pool testing. Right. So if I wasn't about to move forward with the buy next now and all the legwork if the parents and in the community were not in support okay. of it. By looking at the response, yeah, so. I already started today. Okay. I mm -hmm. started with the assurance letter. Uh, I started working with our lead nurse to try and get it, the process started so that we can do the test and stay. But it is a lengthy process. We do have to see if the school physician uh, will sign off on it and um, to get it up and running. What was the physician's um, worries about it last year? Uh, she said that she could not take it on with her workload and that she is not a... Um, infectious disease specialist and she felt that it should be covered by an infectious disease doctor. Am I correct that Jesse said that they would provide additional staffing for that purpose? And free tests. Yes. So that argument shouldn't hold if we can get additional, if we can get a physician to sign off on our application. Does that Good. physician cover, cover other districts or just that? I already spoke to the LP back. We had a one o'clock meeting today. And um, they, none of them are also by next now. Nobody in the LPVEC schools did the by next now testing. So they're all working on it as well. And mm -hmm. I asked them to, that if they had a physician who, if our physician does not want to, if they would be willing, um, and we could possibly use Easter three funds to cover the stipend for that physician. But that's a process. But didn't Pam just say that the state would provide additional staffing? Not physicians to sign off oh, okay. on a buy next now application, no. That so they just need to sign off on, on an application once, if they signed off on it and the machine was here and the process was initiated, their responsibilities at that point would be what? The state or no, us? No, the, the physician. They just oversee it. It's their medical license. So it sounds like the district physician simply didn't want to be responsible for overseeing something. She just felt like she didn't have enough information on it. She just felt it was not in her area of expertise and she couldn't take it on at that time. What is her area Wasn't that around um, when we were remote? What? Wasn't that around like the holiday? Yep, it was like November, yes. Because yeah. I remember it being winter, so it's been almost a year. Yeah. On the, uh, on, on the personal freedoms front, <laughs> um, the part that I still am having difficulty with is if we allow a parent that's concerned to send their child with a mask, that should be their preventive measure, right, from catching the vaccine. If the mask, if the, the mask virus. works, the virus, the virus. If, the, if, the, if, the, yep. um, <laughs> if the mask, if the mask works. So that's kind of where I'm, I'm on the, if as a parent, I'm concerned, I will send my child with a mask and that's their defense of this. If, if other parents don't wanna do that, then they can deal with that and they can deal with the repercussions of that if there are. Um, that's kind of where I'm at with the, the personal freedom end of this is just that if I wear a mask and that works, then I send my kid with it. If, if, and still some of the- Which in theory is great. But in practice, what that's going to end up with is a whole heck of a lot of absences. So it's going to end that, up with six people. And that's people. the parent's problem and their choice to have made that decision for their child. And if that happens, that's their problem. So then we're setting kids up for less academic success than they could potentially have. Like, well, we're, we're parents not, set them up. We're not setting them up. But I mean, we get blamed for it because parents blame educators for just about everything. Right, but I think the option, Pam, is, just, it is, and I can certainly appreciate where you're coming from, but to mandate to somebody that they are going to do X because we know better and we want to do everything that's the safest thing in the world to protect those children. I mean, if that's the case, we should all invest in all these great big bubbles with special air filtration systems so that way they're perfectly protected. It, it, and you can walk that down all the way to the extreme, 
if if they want to be able to, if they're worried and they want to send their child to school with a mask, they have every right to do so. And and if there's somebody that has a issue against that, obviously we would recommend that anyone that is of, of the age to get vaccinated to be vaccinated. We could recommend that they could wear masks, but if we follow Desky's recommendations, it's exactly what we're dealing with. I mean, it's to go to a mandate is a whole, it's it's a different level of, I mean, obviously it's not something that people are taking lightly because the state hasn't gone to that point. I mean, they've, they've indicated that it's a recommendation, not a mandate. The federal government's not mandating it other than for federal employees. I mean, the teachers unions have not mandated for the teachers to take the vaccine either. I mean, going to that step is not been looked at and, and taken very lightly. I mean, everybody seems to be looking at that with a lot of intensity and trying to figure out what the best side of the equation is. I, I don't think the six of us, I mean, are, are in a position that to necessarily mandate to somebody what they're supposed to do with their children. Now, it's an opinion. Every one of us are allowed to have different opinions. Doesn't mean we're right, doesn't mean we're wrong. It's just an opinion. I do miss the days when we agreed on. Yeah, <laughs> no, but that's okay. But this is this is a part of it. I mean, this right. is how it goes. But that's it's just my opinion. my feeling. So. I also want to point out that we, you know, we we can't ignore the percentage of responses. And while mm -hmm. they are almost evenly split, they're not quite evenly split. There's a slight majority uh, of the respondents like, in the community. Fourteen. That right, exactly. Do we not, though, by by following the DESE guidelines, give them both what they want? Yes, we do. I mean, that's yeah. kind of <laughs> require it all, all the wear a mask and get rid of all the social stuff that the Powder Mill and Woodland are doing. Is that even an option? Because Woodland and Powder Mill come out with like they're going to do three feet distance and keep them all at their desks in kindergarten. You can't have circle time or whatever they call it anymore. Um, and they have to rotate through the playground, like if. They didn't do that stuff, they would just require them to wear the mask. But we know that more than all those things, that masks make the biggest difference. I'm just curious. That I mean, we've we've learned from last year's experience that that masks are the best line of defense aside from a bubble. <laughs> you well, know? I, but masks are a lot easier I, to do than a bubble. And I just feel that our obligation is to provide the best education we can to our students. And that by opening, we're we're setting them up for a less than ideal situation because my concern is the extended absences and the extended quarantines. And, and that's that's where I uh, that's where as <coughs> as an educator, you know, I'm I'm really having a hard time. We're we're our job is to set these kids up for success and not to get in their way. Well I mean I agree, however, you know, aside from school, if they're not requiring everyone to wear a mask outside of school. They're going to get sick regardless. I mean, it doesn't but mean look that. look at how many hours they spend in school. I, I mean, I get it, know, but and, I and think, you know, leaving it up to the parents is probably the best choice. And keep in mind that forced quarantine um, also means no participation in, in athletics and extracurricular activities. Right. I mean, so we're, we're it's, this is a disruption beyond anyway. academics. Dylan doesn't do any extracurricular activities either. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, I mean, I well, know I athletics we're, this becomes we're having another meeting, right? right? I could argue this all day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I've said my piece. <laughs> Perfect. But so, like, we're going to do this again on Thursday. Anybody have anything else on the superintendent's presentation? Mr. President, you're up. I, yep. I really don't have a, a report <laughs> other than to kind of get the, the uh, committee up to speed on our uh, cybersecurity awareness training. I think I mentioned that at uh, the uh, previous meeting. Um, to date, there have been three assignments released by the Executive Office for Technology Services and Security. Um, we have had uh, 210 people complete the first assignment, 199 complete the second assignment, and 47 complete the third assignment, which was just released, I think, at the end of the week before last. Uh, and a lot of folks are not um, I not check, you know, folks who were employed during the school year are not uh, necessarily checking their, their email uh, that frequently. 
uh, over the summer. So, uh, it, and those numbers represent 77%, uh, 73%, 17%. Um, would love to be cl uh, closer to 100%, but um, just for comparison's sake, the, the state also releases the average for all the other municipalities and school districts that are participating in this grant program. And we're beating the state average by 25 percentage points on the first assignment, 29 percentage points on the second assignment, and 10 percentage points on the third assignment. So we're doing better than um, most other cities, towns, school districts that are uh, participating in the uh, training grant, but uh, would still like to, to bump those numbers up a little more. We'll, we'll work to do that uh, in the coming weeks as staff return to school. Is there a, a deadline by which all three modules need to be complete? Yes, in the late fall, November, December, okay. depending on the timing of how it you well, then, hey, listen, from where I stand, you know, where the majority of are on summer yeah. vacation, 75% yeah. is pretty darn awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, there, is there any sort of uh, negative results that happen if we don't complete in time? Um, no, we're not under any penalty with, with, with the state. I mean, it's a voluntary program for municipalities and school districts. Um, it, it, there's, an in, there's been an increase in cyber attacks on um, public schools and municipalities. It's starting to be seen apparently by the, by the bad guys as, a, as a, a viable target for them. So uh, the more we can do to train our, our employees, uh, network users to, um, to become aware and vigilant about uh, the things that they click on and they, files that they open, um, the better off we'll be and, and hopefully avoid a, a real catastrophic situation, uh, crippling uh, situation. Do we utilize any sort of uh, test phishing emails for people to click on to make sure and then they get the, the yeah. notice? Good question. We hadn't before, uh, Pat, but um, this program has uh, mock phishing attempts okay. that, that go out periodically, so they are. <laughs> Attempting to, uh, to check on our folks and how how well we're we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we'd like to do once this program is complete in November or December is get on board with either the company that's providing the service for the state or another company who does uh, similar similar things and and continue on with that with those mock phishing attempts and, 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 and identified as external or stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Mr. President? Nope, that's it for today. Okay. So now we're up to subcommittees and liaisons, and we need to technically, is it reorganize these as well or recommit who's going to be Fill part of those? Open positions and such, yes. So if we probably best just go through the list, maybe, and how do is it a nomination process or is it? Well, it's volunteer. Yeah. No, no, I know, but I, I didn't. Uh, I think yeah. we've just gone through them and said, does anybody oh, want to be on Last year, we just emailed Amy what we wanted right. and magically disappeared. Okay. I don't, I'm sure that's not how it's going I think, to happen. I think if we just kind of state our preferences right now, we've never had like an over exuberance of you know, <laughs> okay. <up> for everything. <laughs> We can't have more than three of us on one, correct? Because right. then we would have a open meeting law issue by having four members. Yes. I think okay. that's correct. And I'm sure we have some length. Well, yeah. It's just one person. So definitely open. On negotiations, I had Ted and John were in there last last time. Yeah. Um, are you both willing to oh, stay yeah. in those? Yeah, I'd like to. Okay, is there any anybody else want to join them in negotiations? I do. Mr. Joe. So do we, is that something we need to take a vote on or no. just, it's no, not four. So Amy, can you add Mr. Joe to the negotiations committee? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, finance, John, Ted, and Mr. Hull were in, was in there. John and Ted, are you two? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can certainly fill into that spot that Jeff, was at and I'll join um, finance. Um, Pam, are you still okay doing LPPC? 
board of directors? So yes. So the uh, the sticker it's listed incorrectly, but I think that what you're looking at is listed oh. correctly. So which one were you? So, so I which am one board were you? Yes. Yeah, so I am board oh. of directors, which goal. meets monthly. Okay. Okay. The one that is open, and yes, I'm okay, okay. continuing on with that. Um, I the yeah that's what I have governor. you in is the, is the director right. right yeah the right. Jeff was on the governor's meets yeah, only on quarterly okay and he was the president of it wasn't and... he? Oh, I I don't mind going into that one but I don't want to I don't go right ahead yeah, yeah I, I think actually it might be right up your alley I, okay. honestly I yeah, think that this, that actually that's might that's be a, a fair okay so I'll so probably governors and your directors. That's at least what's listed as amazing. now. Is you're a director. We always get it I was pulling it right off the website. On this sticker. Where did you get the sticker? On our. Oh, I don't have a sticker. I don't have a sticker on mine. Did hey, you get a sticker? sticker? Oh, it's an old sticker. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. That's all, it's okay. I pulled them. I pulled them off. Right, we don't have a name tag. You do. I've been on here for a year. Yeah, it's okay. Hey, these so are, I think it's a three. No, honestly, these are, like these are COVID name tags. I gotta say, we can I spray think them I down. I'm gonna make sure you showed up. up. Right. You know. <laughs> it's like direct center. You gotta come three times before you hit this. Yeah. Did we, uh, if I remember correctly, was it always that we said you needed to be on at least two? Was that, or was it three, or what was the magic, or is that just a recommendation? I feel like I remember when I started Jeff saying something like you. you I did not get told that last year. Oh, okay. All right. If that's the case, Ryan's got some options. Right? No, I'm already on two of them. Yeah. Actually, I think I might be three. Even. <laughs> I'm, I'm on three. three. I'm on three. three. Yeah. If you, I think if we look at the liaisons too, you're, you're oh, certainly yeah, I'm on, on three that. of those. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Board of Governors policy, we are wide open. Um, I certainly would not mind being on the policy committee. Oh, I'll I that one volunteer for that one as well. Okay. Myself. Okay. okay. Sold. <laughs> Look at that. John, you, you can't now. We're full. We I have want. three. I no, I, 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 <laughs> no, I know you did. You did that one. Um, so okay. wait a minute. Is, are there any other interested people for policy or is it just the three of us? I think it's really a good three, isn't it? Yeah, we can't have more than three. Right. Well, no, I just didn't know if like I, I didn't yeah, want to like, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to okay. overstep if somebody else is interested, kind of thing. <laughs> okay, buildings and grounds. I Jeff, can step up to that. Jeff was on that. Okay, I can, Ted. I can step up. Are we getting rid of athletics? Did we talk about getting rid of that one? Last yeah. Time? Still open two others. Just as a point, we we haven't seen any guidance, right? Where the guidance you sent me, where there is no guidance, basically, right? For the That's board. correct. The guidance is there isn't. The guidance at this point. Did so we to vote to get rid of that position. Then, or? I thought we did. We just leave it. Right. I don't. It's I subcommittees. Like special committees, committees need to be voted out. I don't. Mm -hmm. it, I don't think a liaison. That might be probably why we did it that way. So we do it. I probably. I can double check, and if we need to dissolve okay. it officially with a vote, then we can do that. Um, okay. So instructional leadership, Pam and Ryan were on that IOT. You guys okay remaining on those? Um, wellness, Ted and Ryan were on that. I'll continue. Okay, Ryan, you okay with that one? Um, Sped liaison, Ryan and Pam. Okay. Technology, um, Pam and John. Well, I don't think we've done any. I don't know that I've done any. I haven't, certainly. Um, so is that something that's needed? Like, I mean, we've, my name's been on that for two years or a year and a half or a year and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a liaison. Quite honestly, I don't even know what it's defined as. I mean, I'm the only thing that I'm done. thinking of, John, is that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe we're going to be undergoing a technology yeah, audit okay. this year. All right. So, you know, and, and perhaps, I mean, membership has changed. Perhaps you folks, some of you have greater technology expertise. I think it's conflict with my job. I don't think I can. Okay. I do want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I can. I mean, it's my passion, but I can't. So what? So just explain why. Like, why would it be in conflict? Anything to do with um, a direct correspondence, either with, against, or uh, relating to 
either Verizon or competitors the technology that we might provide is a direct conflict of interest of code of conduct. Like I was, yeah, that's, yeah. I well, code of conduct was my employer. Yeah, I mean, I had to go through HR and um, I had to be interviewed before I could even apply for this. So it was a lengthy process and I can't be on any sort of body. Stay yeah. employed, that's a good strategy. Yeah. Well, that's right. Although I would like to, I can't. Well, we've got two people already I'm fine with, yeah. that haven't met in a while. So you guys are like the break the glass when needed. Yeah. Team. Right. Um, Southwood Capital Committee is empty. Uh, that's what do they? I thought that's two fifty. Oh, was that the two people? No, no. Oh. no. It, it the, the the town has a uh, capital committee that entertains um, capital improvement, capital acquisition requests from the departments. For some reason, they sought representation from the uh, regional school committee on on that committee as well, even though we wouldn't necessarily be going to the town of Southwood for approval of any of our capital requests. Um, those would come through the budget process through the annual town meeting. Uh, nevertheless, they they asked for representation on that committee. So we could reach back out to them, find out if that's something they want to continue. And if so, we could populate that. Okay. Um, I think the reason why Southwood uh, had that and still continues is so they can, you know, so there would be an awareness if anything came up in the schools. However, that's still the preview of the, the uh, in other words, the town, uh, anything that, that came in on the capital side has to be comes through this committee and you know through the whole school committee in other words as part of the yeah i mean you know the regional agreement and everything else yeah. takes over but this is left over from the i, I think it's old 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 more days. of a vestige from the from the pre-regional however school days. being on a finance you know being on a uh, capital committee and finance on the collar it's 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 sort of a good idea to sort of look at this because then you can see something coming down and start preparing, you know, so you're not hit at town meetings. Yeah. You know, with because and also or throw me in, you could it, it's, it's, it feeds <laughs> you know from, from from our from our perspective as a school committee, if you can get that up before the finance committee in the town, you'll find it's gonna be it's a lot easier. When they go to town meeting, at least you've got some heads up and everything else. I, I and, don't and having one one person out of here, you know, understanding what's going on helps because I, they can stand up at a town meeting and defend you why the committee did this. Okay, I think it's a fairly light commitment yeah. in terms of number of meetings. Um, well, no, not as light as technology. But <laughs> it's, it's, hey. You have no idea how hard we're working on this. It, you only wake up like at the beginning of the year for about two months for, for the uh, capital stuff. That's uh, what I'm told. You know, they're doing the budgets. That's that's the only time that that committee really wakes up. Okay. It's not a big deal. All right. Uh, legislative liaison. Can we continue the? How often do we send somebody to that? Say, didn't we vote last year who was going or kind of nominated? Yeah, that was a better word for it. Or have we voted from a Granville and Holland if we don't do that? <laughs> You're opting out right. of, of the legislative South liaison no, every year. Yeah. yeah oh, you this is legislative. Year. This is this is so <laughs> it's mass. Oh, every year. Why did we even have Jeff go on? No, go? no, it was me. Uh, oh, this was, was, yeah. Someone bombed. I would go down Jeff to the cave. Jeff went last year, right? Jeff went at home through Zoom. Uh, right. That, okay, that I think was, I was like, was I'm sorry, week. I'm working. Can I just take my name right off the table? Like, No, I always covered the school yeah, committee yeah. because I would go down to the cave. Oh. I was a sacrificial lion. Man, I would go down there. 
oh, party the all the time. Hold on, wait a minute. In yeah. November. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they, they <laughs> we up in a hotel and uh, I'll stay in the hotel on that one. But yeah, no, it's conference is usually really good though. They have it's, really it's, good it's good to go. Very educational. Just to, to see how we fit into this to the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's you know, don't they and, forget about us? And the other issues that and then also you, you get an idea you know, that you find out how far ahead we are in a lot of districts mm -hmm. that, that we do a lot of things right here. I mean, I mean, I see the uh, the initial training. I don't know if Patrick has done it yet, but they do a really good job with the with new committee members taking that initial training too. So I'm not surprised that that's really good too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're done with our subcommittees and liaisons. It takes us to our second public comment. Um, if we have any people from the audience, I know we have one gentleman with his hand raised. Just need your name and your address. Sounds good. Uh, Dave Spina, 7 Great Brook Drive. Um, Going to talk about masks a little bit. Um, first, I want to thank the committee for um, taking this decision really seriously. I know the state kind of put it upon you guys to, to make the decision, and clearly you're, you know, you're really give a lot of thought and consideration. And personally, I appreciate the fact that the seriousness that you're taking. Um, also appreciate the fact that you're doing the community outreach that you're doing. The survey is a fantastic idea. Um, the fact that you're going to delay this all to another 80 years so we can get a lot more, you know, get more people and more input to it. I think that's all fantastic. I caution you a little bit about using the results of the survey with maybe a slim majority either way uh, to mandate decisions of what's going on. Uh, you know, I believe personally that the best educational experience for our children occurs when the parents are most directly involved in decision making associated with that education. Uh, and therefore, because of that, I am strongly in favor really, of just following the DESI guidance. Uh, I don't intend, to, I don't have no desire whatsoever to mandate to some of the parent what they do with their child. At the same time, I want to be able to make the decisions for my child that are directly involved in their education as I can myself. Uh, personally, I have concerns about masks and bacteria and other things that our kids going to be, you know, breathing back in and all that stuff. I've talked to a fair number of uh, healthcare professionals and done other research and I have limited confidence, I'll call it, in the ability of a mask to stop the large hole, to stop particles sufficiently small as a respiratory virus uh, particle is. Uh, that's my decision. That's my opinion. Uh, and I'm going to provide guidance to my own children based on that. Other people, other decisions, they want to do that thing, they're more comfortable bringing their kids to school with a mask, have that. Uh, but to the extent that you as a committee are able to allow that freedom to folks, uh, I strongly encourage you to do so. I understand if the state comes down and mandates something, uh, you know, that you guys got to follow suit. Those of us who feel strongly about this, we'll take that up with the state when it comes to that if it comes to that. But uh, again, just really appreciate you guys. Uh, Taking time to think about this and again, strongly encourage you to do the thing that allows the most direct choice for the various parents in the district. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to add with the we keep saying it's the DESI guidelines. It also says it was developed jointly with the Department of Public Health. So right. there is a angle there for science and what they it's are the recommending. The healthcare professional. Right. Anyone else like to say anything for public comment? I have to start hand in the back, a couple of hands in the back. Yeah. Uh, Nicole Apostle, 26 Lower Orange Road. Um, I have a few points. Um, masks are most effective, I think, as we all know, when both parties, someone who has the virus and someone who does not, are wearing them. That's how they work. It is far less effective if a child who is not sick comes to school wearing their mask and someone who is sick is not. So that is a major point that should be taken with the fact that we know that there are parents who send their kids to school when they know they are sick or have been in contact. And we also know that no one traveling is quarantining like they're supposed to. Uh, yes. The 20 people that we have right now in our district will be 25 very soon. School hasn't even started yet. We got those emails daily. Another member is infected with COVID. Another member, another member. It's summer. No kids are even in school together indoors. And this is the problem we're having. <clears throat> Uh, the Delta variant is far more aggressive and it is resistant to the vaccine. So what we're doing is creating a situation where the virus is going to continue mutating and even people who are vaccinated are not going to be able to fend it off. We're doing a disservice to the global world of scientists 
who have worked so hard to bring us this vaccine because they're going to get a new one very soon. I'm sorry, I'm like very frustrated. Uh, and also, we don't live off the grid. We live in a community where everyone's actions impact others. We are talking about children here. I can promise you all that the 40 kids in the ICU in Louisiana, if they had been in a bus accident and were all on respirators or clinging to life, people would say, we would do anything to make it so that didn't happen. Well, what we can do is take precautions to make sure that people do not die because of this virus. Because we do know that masks work. I work in healthcare as well. Yeah, I, <laughs> and they do work. So I welcome you to go to work in a hospital and not wear a mask on a COVID unit if you'd like to and see if you feel safe, but this helps. It does. Yes, there absolutely is. Um, almost on you can see. Um, and also on the note of the Binax testing, I actually looked them up for myself because I'm going um, to stay with a couple of friends who are all vaccinated. And we were all going to test first, and the box says it's easy enough to use at home. So I don't know why our health professionals feel that it's too complicated. But yeah, we I will, work. I'll give others the chance to speak. But again, if that's my opinion, but my opinion is that I don't like wearing masks. My kids have adjusted, we make the most of it. And last year, we were fully remote, and I don't want that to happen again. I would like to prevent that. But I will also say, that they learned a lot last year. They're more resilient. They know how to use the computer. Uh, my first grader learned how to read completely. She could not read starting out the year, and now she is reading full books. So learning at, learning at home works, but I don't want them to do it. I want them to go to go to school, and we don't want our kids to have their sports cut and everything else. We want them to be as normal as possible. So if we can say, go to school, wear a mask, and keep all of your other freedoms. Is it not worth the mask? We want our kids to grow up and do hard things, right? Go to outer space, be a doctor, be a brain surgeon. Those are hard things and they're gonna be uncomfortable getting there. So if we teach them now that wearing a mask is too much and that they should fight that to not help the neighbor stay healthy, what are we teaching our kids? It's not that big of a deal. It's really not that hard. I've got it on now, I've had it on all day at work, sitting at a desk by myself. It, it's not that big of a deal. And there is science to prove that it works and that it doesn't hinder you. And if your child has a real problem with it, then that's a separate issue. And they should be able to have an individualized education plan that deals with that. If they really can't focus or something, then let it be up to professionals to determine, yes, this is too much for your child. And no, they don't have to wear it, but they have to be the minority. The majority of people have to do their part to take care of the community that we live in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Christine Quinn, one hundred first circle. I kind of want to echo what Nicole said. I mean, people that don't believe mass work will say poo poo to this story, but I am living proof that one person wearing a mask is not enough. I work in a skilled nursing facility. Sure. Spreads like wildfire there, but I wore my mask. I was diligent. I was terrified to bring COVID home to my kids. I was terrified to bring COVID to my work. I kept my kids home remote so that I wouldn't be that person that brought it to the school or brought it to the nursing home. I did everything. We got COVID in my building within a week because my patients don't have to wear masks because this is their home. They're not masked. I'm masked. I got COVID. Like, boom. Guess what? I brought it home. My husband got COVID. Both my kids got COVID. It was awful. My husband had pneumonia, bronchitis. We both needed steroids. It was the sickest either of us have ever felt. And I did everything right. But because my patients weren't wearing masks, I was susceptible. I had not, there was nothing more I could have done. And so people that aren't just you know, I know you're looking at me like, oh, the masks don't work. But you know what? The people who work in the offices at my work, the people that didn't interact with the patients, they didn't get COVID because they interacted with us in masks. Two masks work. One mask doesn't work all the time. 
And I feel at a loss right now that, you know, we're saying we want to, we may want to follow Desi, but at this point, Desi is strongly recommending, which means Desi is basically passing the buck. They're strongly recommending, which means that we as a district should be requiring it for those that are unvaccinated. I mean, it is their recommendation. It is the CDC's recommendation. So I get that everyone wants to have their personal freedoms, but my child's freedom is to be safe and healthy. And he had COVID, so I should be less concerned. People who have had COVID should be way more concerned, and I'm still concerned. So I just think that we as parents and as school committee and as educators need to put our kids' health and wellness at first. And a mask is no big deal. I have a four-year-old. He will wear a mask all day and night without even noticing it's on. We need to protect the teachers too. I, my husband is a teacher in the district. He got COVID because of me. And guess what? He didn't give it to any of the students because he was wearing a mask and they all were too. So it's just, it's a simple thing to do. And I'm sorry to say that if we don't require it, we will have about probably a 50% use of masks. Because Southwick, unfortunately, we don't have high vaccination rates. To me, if we don't have high vaccination rates, that tells me we don't have high mask use either. You know, people aren't getting vaccinated. They don't trust it or they're not comfortable. But a lot of those same people don't believe masks work. So they're not going to force their kids. Go to Big Y. It says you can come in without a mask if you're vaccinated. I see children there every time I go without a mask on. So if you're bringing your kid to Big Y without a mask on, even though it says don't wear a mask, you know, you have to wear a mask if you're not vaccinated, you're going to send your kid to school without a mask too. And us parents that are worried about our kids, they're only half protected with their mask on. So as much as you on the school committee, I respect your position and you have a big one. It's an important role that you play. You, it is your job to protect our kids too, to protect the teachers, to protect the staff. It's a big responsibility. So as much as you want to say it's up to the parents, it's your job. And I just would hate to see that if someone gets it, that kid was wearing a mask, you know, you could have a problem on your hands when the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics, everyone, the healthcare professional, they're saying children should be masked at school right now. So if you're not following that guideline, you may have a sticky situation. So I think that is something you should also be considering as a district. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Suzanne Sabota, 43, Tonga Road again. Um, so I'm also an early childhood educator, as well in a different district, as well as a parent in this district. And school is a community. It is a community and kids, even though science doesn't support this, kids have magnets in their bodies. And when one kid is interested in something, the other kid is naturally <laughs> attracted to them. And they physically get closer to each other. They can't help it they're curious and they want to learn and they're creatures they're sensory creatures especially the younger you go and also the younger you go the gooier they are and the less sanitary they are with the things they have and they are happy to wipe it on your neighbor or you or wherever and so safety is of utmost caution the younger you go that's why we have lockdown drills I've been teaching since 90, 1993, never had a real lockdown because there's been a danger person, dangerous person, and I do urban teaching. Um, we do fire drills all the time. Unfortunately, I have been in two school fires, so don't look where I go. Because, you know, <laughs> evidently I'm the only person I know who's ever been in two. Um, we talk about mandating masks. Well, if you are exposed, we're going to mandate you to quarantine and miss two weeks of school. And then your child's going to have to try and catch it up and not just your child, but all the other children who miss those two weeks. And trying to keep one kid masked and other kids not masked, especially when they're younger, that puts more burden on the educator. It's not just about sickness, but it's a, just another distraction. And the little kids are really good about wearing their masks, but not if they're 50-50. 25, 75%, whatever. It's one more thing for a teacher to juggle. And then when those kids, group of little kids come back after two weeks of being out and you have to catch that group up, not every classroom has a paraprofessional. 
to take that little group of kids that was out for two weeks to catch that group up. I don't know what this district is planning for remediation for if this group misses for two weeks and then another group misses for two weeks. Or maybe it's the same group that misses another two weeks. Now they're a month behind. You know, this could really snowball. Like the numbers in Southwick have snowballed. In July, we were at 0.7% infection rate. Okay. That was July 7th. July 22nd, we're at 2.2. July 29th, 2.9. August 5th, 5.8. Um, August 12th, that was last Friday, 12.4. Welcome to yellow. We are now in yellow. We're not even in school yet. You know, um, kids have been. Not really congregating anywhere a lot that I've seen. I mean, the schoolyard's empty most of the time. Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts don't happen a lot over the summer. Not a ton of sports going on. The beach, for goodness sakes, is totally empty. And the same way, but, but, you know, the kids are, a lot of kids aren't together in groups of 30 or more, you know, 20 to 30. They're not in these huge groups. You know, um, so, and, and masks, yes, they work best if the mask is on the person who's sick. And again, people who they've now come to realize that even if you've been vaccinated, you can catch Delta variant, be asymptomatic and pass it on to other people. So even the vaccinated are now dangerous to the unvaccinated. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Team Spina 75th of Drive Southwick. Um, a good friend of mine, Kate Johnson. Not sure if you're familiar with who Kate Johnson is. She was uh, she's a PhD and um, she's the health the public health nurse in town for 13 years. Uh, she has a certificate in public health and public uh, health nursing. Um, I've asked her with regards to this in the past, with regards to masks, and she believes that the only masks that work are N95 masks that are fitted for you. So if you have a N95 mask that is fitted for you and you're working in a hospital, that's totally different than the mask that you're wearing right here that I see in front of you. Um, the regular surgical mask will not prevent the transmission of COVID-19 or any other flu virus. If they're worried about COVID transmission, then every student and, and staff faculty should be tested with an N95, which is, which is completely unreasonable. N95 masks are only used in the hospital setting, and the mask mandate is absolutely ridiculous and cannot mitigate COVID-19 transmission. She cannot say it enough. We need to look at the historical data on how flus are transmitted. Uh, and that's, that, that's basically what she says, and I totally agree. It is our decision whether we want to put a mask on our child. If they want to put a mask on their child, they can put a mask on their child. I believe in freedom, and I'm not, I don't feel that I'm actually affecting or infecting the community because the, it, these masks do not work. And you're causing bacteria. My son, Ryan Track, he went to the basketball after school. He had to wear a mask. He's sweating. He's breathing in his own CO2, which is causing bacteria in your lungs. We don't have the data on that of what the long lasting effects are. We only were in school for about a month and a half last year. We were all at home. So we don't really know the, the repercussions of that. I've been working at the village since day one. Okay. I'm with plenty of customers. I know that with my mask, when I had to wear it, I was lightheaded. I felt dizzy. I uh, wanted to, you know, I sometimes had to lay down because if you're running and you're doing stuff that is actually active, you do, you you feel lightheaded, at least I do, okay? And I know kids are sitting in school and stuff, but they're gonna be running on the playground and stuff. And then you're gonna be breathing in that CO2 and that bacteria of the wetness of that mask. And I just don't think it's healthy for our kids to be in a mask six hours a day, and then an after-school sport five days a week. We don't know what the long-term repercussions will be for that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Lauren Wheeler, 14 Union Island. I've been a surgery PA for 20 years now. The cleanest, one of the more cleanliest places that you can find. An N95 mask is just going to keep you from getting this respiratory virus. That is the only mask that is going to allow you to completely protect from this tiny virus. And yes, the number 
numbers are what they are right now, yes, they will go up because that's what respiratory viruses do. <clears throat> they come back in the fall and they come back in the winter and that's when you're gonna see the numbers. It, it, it's nothing we can even control because that is what happens. And if they're here to stay, it's not going anywhere. It's gonna to continue to mutate whether we have a vaccine or not, it's gonna find a way around it. That's how these viruses work. And I, and I completely disagree with you. My kids along with tons of other kids are out there. They're living their life. My daughter's in a gym. 20 hours a week doing gymnastics with all full gym. There's no mask. Playing hockey in hotels, hanging out with kids, having sleepovers. No mask. We're at restaurants. There's people right here. They can we can take our masks off at the table and it's completely okay. But there's a person right here. But they can't do it in school when they're separated from each other at their desk. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. We have to use some common sense here. Some of these rules are asinine. Why? but they don't make any sense. Our kids are doing everything else and they can actually sit in a busy restaurant, a very packed restaurant, people everywhere, no mask, that's okay. But they can't sit at their desk when there's kids not even near them. Excuse me, we, we need to let public comment let, let, I want to make sure we get some ground rules just set up, guys. I understand that this is charged and this is emotional. Public comment is meant for, I'm giving everybody a little bit more time. It's supposed to be three minutes. Um, I can certainly understand the passion everybody has, but I'm going to ask everybody to be respectful when the speaker is speaking. This is not meant to be a debate. Um, you guys have been doing really good so far. So I. I hey, can I finish my comment? I'm yes, ma'am. So what I would say is that there's very different, different, there's a difference of opinion, big time, right? So everybody needs to live their own life and have the freedom to do what they think is right for their family. And that's the bottom line. You let the parents decide and, and everything, everything's happy. That's how it should be. We control our own kids, our own family, our own environment, and that's all we can do. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is TJ Wheeler, 15 Gables and Lane, South Lake. I just think that what we're going to come to the conclusion is down the road, these masks are, it's, people are going to find out that these masks are hurting the kids and the germs and their social interaction is almost gone with all these kids now. They're all on their phones. They're going to go to school. They can't see kids smiling. Young kids can't read other kids' faces. What are we doing? I mean, I just think that 10 years from now, there's going to be studies. There's going to be a lot of parents that are shaking their heads saying, what the heck did I do? You know, we can disagree, but you can't say, hey, put a mask on because I want to put a mask on. You're going to take my rights away, but my rights are more important than your rights. It doesn't work that way in the United States. What are we doing? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. To be honest, there are going to be kids who, one, are going to say, yeah, my parents say I don't have to wear masks. They're not going to wear masks. Two, they're going to get near other kids. They're not going to say six feet. They're not even going to say three feet. They're going to be touching. They're going to be hugging. They're going to be this and that and this and that, especially the younger kids. Even the older kids, they're going to be out playing recess and they're going to be, they're going to be playing soccer, playing basketball, racing, even just doing the simplest things, they're going to be getting near each other. And I think we should be recommending or mandating that everyone has to wear a mask because just a few people wearing a mask, it's not going to protect them. The way masks work is you wear a mask to protect other people. To, for everyone to stay safe, everyone has to wear a mask. Just my opinion. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm Cole Burnt, Crazy Road, Granville. Um, just to clarify some confusion from earlier, um, I'm on the select board and board help. Uh, the reason that there are not Granville and Holly numbers is because we share the same zip code. <laughs> so, therefore, that is how the data is reported to the state, and then it is not broken down from it. So, when you look at 
Granville's numbers, that is Granville and Colin combined, all of their numbers, all of their averages. Um, right now, the only average kids are indeed in Granville, but yeah, so just to explain that little bit of confusion, that's why it is a little bit scary. Um, <laughs> like I said, I'm on the Board of Health. I'm here speaking for myself tonight. Um, I hope to have an official letter drafted for you all from the Granville Board of Health by your next meeting. I don't know if we can make that happen because of the short notice and over the internet and all that jazz, but we will see. Hopefully we have something to give you. I share a lot of the frustration that a lot of people have shared tonight because I have been up to my eyeballs in this for 18 months. I have watched it played out. I sit on the safety committee to try to figure out what rules to implement to best protect public health. It is not fun. Nobody is enjoying themselves with this. There is no agenda to take people's freedoms away. I promise you. The reason that things are not being mandated from up above is because people higher up can't take political hits anymore. They literally just have kicked the can down to us locals and said, here, figure this out because I'm not putting my neck out on the line anymore, which has made things exceedingly difficult for us when, you know, you're dealing in a situation where you're like, oh, well, the governor doesn't have emergency orders in place anymore. So therefore, you know, are we legally even able to do some of this stuff. You're dealing with neighboring communities that have different rules than yours. You can go into a business in Southwick and shop there, but you know, neighboring community has taken additional steps. So you need to wear a mask there and people get confused and angry and don't understand and take it out on, on people just doing their jobs. So it, it's really frustrating and difficult. Honestly, all due respect to you guys, it shouldn't be your fault. It should, it should be coming down from higher than you, 100%, so that there is continuity and a level playing field. I'm, and it stinks because it's in my lap too. We are, as a board, sitting now because of CDC recommendations. We had a discussion at our last board meeting about what do we do? According to the CDC right now, everybody in Hampton County, indoors, regardless of Vaccination status should have a mask on. That's what the CDC says. We're working on drafting that stuff for our municipal buildings at the very least because of the way things are. I watched it last year go through the schools. It's a nightmare chasing down parents, parents being dishonest about things, parents sending their kids to school with COVID positive tests. It happened in this district more than once. So how do we trust that people are gonna do the right thing? We can't, we're not at that point. And I know that the governor is gonna rest on the laurels of the vaccination rate of this state. We are not in that discussion. We're not in that room. The Eastern part of the state is blowing us out of the water. We have abysmal vaccination rates here. You guys can't have your cake and eat too. Something has to give. We either need to get vaccinated or we need to take additional measures. People are not getting vaccinated. Granville and Tallinn haven't hit 50%. They're almost there. Southwick is just there. The entirety of Hampton County is 51%. Those are Florida numbers. What's happening in Florida right now? Those are Florida numbers. That's where we are. So how are we even having this conversation? Kids can't be vaccinated. And our numbers right now, as far as rates in Massachusetts and spread in our community are exactly where they were right before Halloween last year. I don't know if you all remember what happened after Halloween last year, but we wound up in a bad situation. We proved in this district last year through the really hard work of this administration, which I do not always see eye to eye with, Let's be honest here. I've been at 
and not meeting to minimum public comment. I don't always see eye to eye with it, but the administration and the staff and the teachers did a phenomenal job, and more so than any district in this area. Our kids were in school. Why? Because we took steps to keep them safe. Let's keep them in school. I, I can make a thousand, you know, anecdotal stories about this, that, and the other things, things I've seen sitting on board. It doesn't matter. Our numbers are what they are. They stink. And until they improve, we have to make some difference. Thank you. Anyone else? One more. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Oh, no, we're, uh, we're not, we're not going to get into a, a debate. Yeah. Okay, no. so okay. what I want to know, what I want to say from the last, last thing, we don't have the data of what masks do if you're breathing in your own bacteria. For a long period of time, at a young kid, maybe somebody has asthma, maybe somebody has some, you know, behavior issues, may have anxiety. You know, I don't know about you, but I feel lightheaded when I can't breathe. And there's so many other people that I feel have that same thing. You are literally putting, your mask is wet when you take it off. Unless you had to change it 10 times a day, your mask is wet. You're breathing in your own CO2. God did not make us that way. God made us to breathe in air and breathe out CO2. So a mask with the bacteria, we don't have that data. And I do not believe that the masks work. The virus is so small, it gets through the mask. So what are we doing to our children? We're making decisions for our children that could be harmful to their health. That's, okay. that's really, you know, you've got to weigh out the two. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate everyone's comments. Um, at this point, we are going to go to committee discussion. Um, first up is old business. We have a school committee retreat and training set for 825. Do we have any updates on agenda or? That's on you. And sounds good. And we need to meet with our school attorney. Okay. Sounds good. Um, anything are, else? Are we still on the Chris Holland location on the 25th? Good. What time? And it, I think it was 8 to 4. Say. Yeah, I think it was eight to four. Amy, do we have a time or? Yeah, it's usually eight to four. And it's just Yeah, if you come early, they'll be free. And it's like, because early it in the morning. Everybody, everybody is, is available on the same, correct? Yes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but if anybody is um, interested in making sure that something is discussed or at that retreat that we should email you yes. and this would be your responsibility. Yep. yep, we'll add it to the agenda. I was just wondering whether there was anything started on the agenda there up is, till this point. The, the, our uh, school attorney is coming to do a training. Okay, on the one that we couldn't get at the end of last year. Right. Okay, but if anybody has any items that they wanna have added to that for an agenda, please let me know. Anything else in our old business? Uh, new business. Um, I had something that I just wanted to throw out there real quick that I've been thinking about the last day or so on a much lighter note um, with Jeff's uh, resignation. And I got thinking, how long was Jeff on the board? 13, 13 years. I, I thought I thought I remember him telling me 18, but maybe it was 13. Yeah, so it was a long time. I know we do these nice uh, proclamations in the meeting, but I was kind of thinking that um, maybe if you if you're on the committee over 10 years or something, we at least give you a plaque or something that's sim a more symbolic of our appreciation for what the time he gave and the efforts he gave. Um, I you know I didn't feel like that. Sometimes it's like if I if I don't run again, I've only done this for three years, whatever. But to do it for a decade or more is a real commitment. And uh, I just wanted to throw that out there for any. What about two decades? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, when you, you stop Ted, bookends, Ted. <laughs> so you can't go into the Hall of Fame until you retire. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. Right, yeah. <laughs> I did retire <laughs> from this. So that was just something I wanted to throw out there. They've been thinking about just, uh, you know, as something to potentially if we could, we could do something to recognize sure. that. I agree. I totally support that. And force them to come back in and taste the music. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had such a light note in that. There you go. You yeah. did <laughs> Anything else under new business? We are meeting again on that's my understanding from what we've all talked about. I guess 5.30 again. Yeah. Here. Yes. Um, Amy, I have a question for you, and it's about, um, you know, when we're streaming, um, people are still able to listen in. Am I correct? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, are people who are listening able to make public comment via email the way they used to, or is that is public comment now only for people that are present? Yeah, it was listed somewhere. But That's you have my to understanding. Be present for it. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Would, thank you. I am concerned. The only other thing I'm concerned about is just uh, if we have do we have enough mic pickup? We think to pick it, pick up what people are saying during public comment. I'm curious to go back and listen people to this me. now to yeah. make sure. <laughs> So someone texted me, so they heard me, and I feel like I was kind of quiet. So I think. Okay, I appreciate yeah. it. Instant feedback. That's this, great. This is the first day with this setup. And people, this is the first time and we've had people here yeah. in a long time. Yeah. So. Well, I think we did the last meeting. I don't think we have any people here though. Okay. Yeah. So, That's good to know, though, that they can yeah. be heard. The only thing, Amy, that I would, that we might want to consider is, I don't know what kind of attendance we may have on Thursday. Uh, I don't know whether there's a, if we're anticipating a, a large number of people. So if the committee wants to, we could have it at the auditorium at the high school, that's- I, ju I just don't know. I mean, that's okay. Yeah, that's no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do we do if there's- More people if show we up get here and there's a hundred people yeah. that want, well, then we may just have to do the best we can in here. Yeah, or we could go up there. It's not a good one. If I may, I know, you know, not public outside, but on the planning board. So we dealt with whole car I think, right? So <laughs> carrying <laughs> very large, different uh, attendance. Uh, quite yeah, <laughs> opinions, um, you might want to talk to Mike Doherty, who is the you know chairman of the uh, okay. select board. I mean, that's going to be the planning board, and somehow he was able to figure out or estimate what the attendance was going to be. What kind of yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, at this point, um, I don't think we need an executive session, so I guess I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor of adjournment? Motion passes 600. Thank you very much.